Hi everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com and I'm going to introduce you to the cobweb model. Recall that the market equilibrium supply has to equal to demand and the solution of that, if we've got here the supply set and the demand set, is where the two lines cross. So here is the equilibrium. Okay, so we can have a coordinate there, equilibrium, say Q star, so the equilibrium quantity, and P star. But uh, how do we reach that equilibrium? Can we just assume that the markets just hit equilibrium straight away? That's not so realistic. And so the Cobweb model is a model that explains how we reach this equilibrium point when we are starting off equilibrium. In other words, when we are not at the equilibrium price and quantity. How do we reach this equilibrium point when we are somewhere off the equilibrium? And can we reach it? In other words, a cobweb model is a dynamic model of equilibrium. Dynamic meaning that it involves time. The prices and quantities will be adjust over time in such a way that eventually we it reaches the equilibrium point if this can happen. This is in contrast to our when we first met the supply and demand curves where we look at the static problem so we simply want to find where they cross static not involving time we're just interested in is the equilibrium and where is it the two equations that make up the cobweb model is the supply and the here the inverse demand and what we notice is this look at the subscripts qt the subscript t means the quantity and supplied at time t T may be in years, may be in months, may be in days, it's whatever units the data is in, okay? But what's crucial here is you can see that the supply, quantity supplied at time T depends on the price, because this is a function of price, in the previous time period. In other words, the suppliers are acting like one lag behind. They're looking at, say, the previous prices to set the quantity that they will supply in the next period. So we think about uh, weeks here, they look at last week's prices to determine what they're going to supply this week. The demand on the other hand, you can see this um, the, in the demand side they'll pay the, for the price P at time T when they see that the quantity is what the quantity is supplied at time T. In other words it's like at, everything is in this time period so for the demand side, they see what the quantity is supplied in this period, say, and they'll de that determines the price they're willing to pay in this period. Okay, now this cobweb model gets its name, you'll see in a moment, is because of the way, the nature in which this uh, equilibrium, P star, Q star, is reached. Say, suppose we start at the period zero, so let's start the story. It always starts off with the supply side, because that starts at time period before everything else. So let's call it P0 okay. and the supply kicks off the supply side so it says that if the supplier sees what the price is in the initial time period that will determine what he is going to supply so we have to read off the graph here, the supply in the next period is going to supply mount Q1 meaning that ne the next period so P0, that's P0, so T minus 1 is 0, that must mean that T is 1, so Q is 1. Okay, now it flips over to the demand side, so now the, the, the so Q1 mount in the market, and the people are looking to buy, they see that that is the mount, that is the mount in the market. Well, according to the demand curve, they're prepared to pay less, okay, because that's P0 is higher than this amount here, and uh, this period they're prepared to pay this much. Now the supplier seeing that they're prepared to pay this much that he kind of revises his um, decision or revises his plan on how much to produce in the next period. 
according to this, if, he's, if he sees the price in time one at this level, the supply curve determines what amount he's going to produce, what it's going to supply, sorry, in the next period, he's going to supply this much. Now we've gone from a market, we're in step one where there's quite a, uh, uh, a Q1 amount, and the second period now there's less amount in the market. So people seeing that there's less amount in the market, obviously they're going to be prepared to pay more. How much more? This much more. So now they're going to pay P2. So the story flips back and forth between supply and demand. And if we connect the lines, you can get see the idea that eventually, you know, I'm going to reach the equilibrium. There, that is Q star, say, P star. And that's where you get the name cobweb form, because it looks like cobweb. So intuitively, well, let's let's put it another way. Let's try to put this another way without graphs. So there's a certain amount on the market. Uh, the more there is on the market, the less I'm going to be paid. But if the less I'm going to be paid, the supplier is going to produce less. And then if I see that there's less in the market, I'll suddenly be prepared to pay more. And then when the supplier sees that suddenly I'm prepared to pay more, it's going to supply more. See? So that's like how it works. You can see then what is happening to the prices. Let's go another step. The prices start off high level, then it goes to a low level, then it goes to a high level, then it goes to a low level. So it's fluctuating, isn't it? It's fluctuating and so it's quantity. High, low, and it'll be high, low, high, low, high, low. In other words, you can think about a time graph involving time here because since this is a dynamic model of equilibrium, it must be quite useful to look at a time plot. So scale and time, let's look at the price. And this graph here corresponds to this. So first of all, I start off at time zero at this level. This is P0. Okay. Eventually at some point I'm going to reach P star. Let's say let's say first of all just my uh, let's get a nicer graph than this. I'm trying to show things, make them nice and large. That's it. Is that large enough? Okay, let's say that this is... No, that's not nice enough. Okay, I'm back again. Let's say here now. Let's say this is P star. 